Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. In this tutorial, we'll learn how to set up PBR textures in Blender 4.2. Physically based rendering, shortly PBR is a method of shading and rendering. That provides a more accurate representation of how light interacts with surfaces. The PBR aims to get a more realistic render. Several texture maps are used to control different material properties, determining how that material reacts to light. There are some websites where we can find PBR textures for free. One of them is polyhaven.com. Go to the website and download the slab tiles texture maps. You can choose different resolutions. I will download these texture maps in 2K quality as a zip file. Don't forget that the higher the quality of the texture, the longer the time it takes to render. Switch to the zip file and choose exactly which files to download. Let's select the Ambient Occlusion, Diffuse, Displacement, Normal Map in OpenGL, and Roughness Maps in JPEG format. You can choose PNG or XR formats if you want to have more quality texture maps, but it will increase the file size. Then download the files. Extract the zip file. Open a new Blender file. Press Shift-A and add a plane. Press Z key to switch to render preview mode. For lighting, add a point light source. Move up the light source. Click the lamp icon and set the light power to 100 watts. Click the Render Properties tab and ensure that Cycles is active render engine. Set the maximum sample value to 32 for faster rendering in the viewport. Set the maximum samples in the render result to 64. Split the viewport into two sections. Switch the left one to the shader editor. Hit the N key to close the right panel. Select the plane and click the new button to add material. So the principled shader node will be connected to the material output. The principled BSDF combines multiple layers into a single easy to use node. It combines multiple shading models into a single node, allowing you to create a wide range of materials, from metals to plastics, glass, and more. If you want, you can watch my tutorial on how to use principled shader node in Blender. Alright, let's connect the PBR textures to the principled shader. Go over the shader editor, press Shift-A, and add an image texture. Click the Open button and find the texture maps we have just downloaded. First, we will choose the color map. It's also called a diffuse map or albedo. It defines the color and pattern of the object. Select the diffuse map image and open the image. The color space must be RGB. Because we will use color data, plug the color node into the base color node of the principled BSDF. That's it. You can also adjust the mapping of the texture on the plane. Add a texture coordinate and a mapping node. Plug the generated into the vector node. Plug the vector into the vector. Now you can scale the texture using the scale node of the mapping node. Set the X, Y, and Z scale values to 2. You can also change the location and rotation of the texture. I have made a tutorial on how to use the texture coordinates node in Blender. You can watch this tutorial from the link. Alright, let's add another image texture. Open the normal map. Switch the color space to non-color, because we'll use non-color data from the normal map. A normal map is an image that consists of directional data for the normals. The red, green, and blue channels of the image are used to control the direction of each normal. This can create the illusion of surface details like bumps and grooves without changing the actual geometry of the object. You can't plug the color node into the normal node of the principled BSDF directly. You need a vector between them. Add a normal map vector. Plug the vector node into the vector node. Plug the color to the color node and the normal to the normal node. That's it. When you zoom in on the plane's surface, you can see the surface's details. 
but it is only an illusion. The floor is still a plane and not deforming. You can also increase strength value, so you can see the details better. That's the best way in computer graphics to add details without increasing the vertex number of the geometry. All right, let's add an image texture and open the roughness map. We'll plug the color node into the roughness node. Roughness value determines how much the material will be reflective and rough. A value of zero means the material is completely reflective. A value of one means the material is completely rough. However, sometimes we might want some parts of the material to be more reflective or rough. Roughness maps come into play here. They are black and white image data. The black areas are completely reflective. The gray areas are medium reflective and the white areas are completely rough. First, switch the color space to non-color. Plug the vector node into the vector node. Plug the color node into the roughness node. When you zoom in on the surface, you can see that the stones are reflective and the areas between the stones are rough. Now let's add real depth to the plane. To do this, we'll use a displacement map. Displacement maps change the geometry physically, so we need to increase the vertex number of the plane. Go to the Modifier tab and add a Subdivision Surface Modifier. Switch to the Simple mode. Set the Subdivision number to 6 for the viewport and Render. To see Subdivided Edges, press Z key and switch to Wireframe mode. Disable the Optimal Display option. That's it. Switch back to Render Preview Mode. Now, we need to make some settings before adding a displacement map. Go to the Render Properties menu and switch the feature set to Experimental. Go to the Modifier tab and enable the Adaptive Subdivision option. Finally, go to the Material Properties tab, scroll down to the Settings, and switch to Displacement and Bump. Go over the Shader Editor and add a new image texture. Open the displacement map. It's a black-white image data. Switch to non-color space. We need a displacement node. Add a displacement vector node. Plug the vector node into the vector node. Plug the color node into the height node. Plug the displacement node into the displacement node of the material output. That's it. It looks very high. Set the scale value to 0.07. Another texture map is Ambient Occlusion. Ambient Occlusion is a type of fake shadow that darkens areas like cracks and crevices, giving us a more realistic render. Add an image texture. Open the Ambient Occlusion map. Switch the color space to non-color. Plug the vector node into the vector node. We need a Mix Color node. Add a Mix Color node. Plug the color node into the B socket of the Mix Color. Plug the Diffuse map into the A socket of the Mix Color. Plug the Result node into the Base Color node. Switch the Blending mode to Multiply. When you slide the factor value to 1, between the stones will be darker. Alright, you can also set up all texture maps with Node Wrangler add-on in a more practical way. Go to the Edit menu, Preferences, and click the Add-on tab. Search for the Node Wrangler add-on and enable it. Let's delete all texture maps. Select the principled shader and press shift Control t Browse the texture maps and select all of them. Click the principled setup button. That's it. So it will set up all texture maps easily and quickly.
You can also use environment texture for lighting. Go to the Outliner Editor, disable the point light in the viewport, and render. Go to the World Properties tab, click the Color node, and open an HDRI image. You can find lots of free HDRI images on the web. The textures look more realistic under the environment texture. Alright, let's see how the PBR textures work with the EV Render Engine. Go to the Render Properties tab and switch to the EV Render Engine. Enable the Ray Tracing option. It looks nice. As you know in Blender 4.1 and earlier versions, when selecting an HDRI image for lighting in the EV Render Engine, the shadows of objects in the scene did not appear. With the release of Blender 4.2, environment textures will now be able to cast shadows. Let's see how it works. Go to the World Properties tab, open up the Settings panel, and enable the Shadow option. That's it. Another cool new feature of Blender 4.2 EV is that it supports displacement maps. Thanks for watching. See you in the next tutorial.